Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode, I was talking about how my uh, plastic production over here in this part of the base, uh, let's turn that off, there we go, over here in this part of the base wasn't running fast enough because I was really short of um, basically the input ingredients for it, which at this point is either oil or uh, coal. Well, it definitely needs coal, but it then also needs oil or more coal as well. And so since then, I've put in a couple of extra um, mines down, way down here somewhere, somewhere. Here we go. So I've got an oil mine here and then a couple of coal mines. There's another oil mine somewhere. Oh, it's down here. And then a couple of coal mines over here as well with the wrong name. So let's rename them while we're here. So that one should actually be called, uh, let's call it oil mine. And then how many of those have I got so far? Oil mine six. That's a good name for it. Typing is difficult. So it's counting, apparently. Also, recognising the dif difference between oil and... Oh, for goodness sake, Lawrence. <laughs> okay, so we'll name that one, and the one up here can be Coal Mine 4. Okay, so these are my very standard... Um, come back and fix that in a moment. <laughs> so these are very much my standard, um, I've lost them now, standard mines. We've got um, street stripes of, um, of, of mining drills with the with the belts between them and the, and the poles behind them, feeding down to a, um, a balancer and then into these stations that will just load up and load up until they've got about 20,000 and then a train will turn up. Although it seems we've actually got enough now, so they're, actually, they're starting to fill up properly. Um, slight thing that's not ideal with these is that they... Um, they don't actually have enough power, so every night they turn off for a little while and then kick back in again in the, the morning after. But I've decided I don't really care about that, that very much. I mean, I could put in some more solar panels, and at some point in the near future I'm going to um, start making the better solar panels. So instead of these ones that produce 60 kilowatts each, I'm going to start producing these ones that produce 400 kilowatts each. So they're what's that, eight times, seven or eight times as good. Um, they, they, okay, they take some extra mirrors in there as well, to, to, uh, extra parts to make them, and I think I'll need to make them in space and ship them back down again. But they're going to be much better and, and for, for power generation, so I'm going to start using those everywhere. Um, but yeah, not just yet. For the time being, I don't really care if these mines shut down overnight. It's not, doesn't, it's not the end of the world. It do, in fact, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter at all. The oil mines are the same. However, they seem to not use anything like as much power, so they haven't they haven't run out yet. And in fact, this one's filled up all its tanks. So now, as you can see, my um, supplies of the these hydrocarbons are um, doing extremely well. So that means we've now got no, not here. Over here, we've now got a station here that has sufficient coal in it. In fact, some more is being is on its way at the moment. So hopefully, that'll arrive before uh, before this supply runs out. And as you can see, I've got two nearly full blue belts coming along here of plastic from the uh, from those facilities, and this pipe of petroleum gas is 30-40% full. So that's it, there's enough of it just about. Um, I, in order to get all of this coming out, I did need to put in a second column of it though, and I think the reason it's not running quite as quickly as it was when I first put it together is because I then came along and slapped all of these um, productivity modules in, and that was an attempt to get a bit more a bit more plastic out of the amount of coal and the amount of gas that I was using up. And as you can see, this has um, given me a minus 60% speed, which is why I need more of them, uh, but it has given me a 24% productivity boost, so I'm getting an extra quarter free. Which is um, yeah, which is quite nice. I should probably come along and slap that in all of these as well, productivity modules in all of these as well, just to get everything um, boosted in the same sort of way. Um, but we'll, and we'll, we'll see, we'll see whether I get round to that. However, I have been using a lot of productivity modules, so up here, I was wasn't making them anything like quickly enough. So as you can see, I've put in um, the speed modules into the machines that are making all of the modules, and I've also beaconed them up as well, just in order to make these things run much, much more quickly. And it hasn't made that much of a difference to my power consumption. Even all of those between them, um, every single assembly machine in the in the in the place, still only using 600 kilowatts. And that's, that's that's nothing compared to the 300 megawatts that's being used by the core miners. So I'm quite happy with the way this is running at the moment. The reason I needed so many of these productivity modules was not not just for the plastic, but I've also been loading up 
um, my my rocket here for another trip back to Ganymede, that planet where I'm getting Vulcanite from now, because that wasn't really running fast enough. And there's been a bit of a comedy of errors over there, uh, which I shall show you in a moment. But first, I shall, so, uh, as you can see by the uh, on the uh, the right hand side here, I've loaded this rocket up with loads of um, productivity modules and some more belts and other bits and pieces that I'm gonna, that I want to take up there, just in order to get it, everything up there running a bit faster and a bit more productively, should we say? Now I'm wondering whether I should actually be doubling all of these numbers and putting it, sending up twice as much extra stuff, uh, just to make it even, even more, um, even more productive. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But the problem is, as I think I've, I've touched on before, Ganymede is so far away in a different system that it takes about 500,000 fuel to get there. So every time I go out, out there, it is a bit of a mission. So actually, given that, I think I will configure this to. Um, take a bit more out when it goes so if we look at this combinator here this is the stuff that I'm taking out so let's let's increase that to 1500 and worst case I can bring some of these back with me um, and I'm going to double that generally just increase all of these by not insignificant amounts because I don't want to get there and realize I haven't brought enough I mean I, I could do this a slightly more intelligent way and um, and actually work out what I'm going to need for this but I think I'm um, just going to be lazy. Okay, so as you can see now, because I've because I've updated this combinator, which is connected to the network here, the bots are now bringing in all of the things I've just ordered, and that's all getting loaded into the rocket. So this will, so we can see if we look at this one, you can see the negative numbers. Like there's minus seven um, turbines, minus three hundred and something uh, productivity modules, but those are dropping or increasing, getting closer to zero as the um, as the stuff gets brought in and loaded into the rocket. So I shall now. Um, fly up there myself. Hang on, what's going on here? Why have we why have we not got any power? Clearly broken something around here. No, no not quite. Okay, that seems to be hooked up again. I don't know what I did there. That would explain why that train hadn't that um train with the vulcanite in it hadn't unloaded. If there's no power over here then it wouldn't have it would have gone to the station, sat there for a few minutes while it uh, tried to try to decide whether there was, whether anything was going to get unloaded or not, and then wandered off again. So let's send that back over to the um there was this Vulcanite drop base north. Go there until empty. Um yeah, I don't know how I managed to break that. I must have pulled up a, a power pole somewhere where I shouldn't have done. So back over here, how's this getting on? Okay, there's still quite a lot of um, of uh, productivity modules to go, so I'll show you what what um, why I'm grumbling a bit. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, I'm having up here on Ganymede. I'm having the same sort of problems. Everything has run. Everything has lost power. And this time, it's not because of, it's not because of random cables being knocked over, which is what I assume I did back on Norvis, or because I um, had a meteorite fall on a fall on a power pole, like happened on Frost. This time, it seems to be because my um, nuclear plant has run out of power and as far as I can tell looking at this I think it's because none of the uh, uranium-235 made it through to the power ge to the um, fuel cell generation um, before the Coverex all filled up which is a bit w looking at this is a bit weird because this one's got 80 and this one's got 80 and this one's got I'm not really quite sure because something strange th this is obviously unloading when it ran out of power um, so I'm surprised there wasn't some dribbling out here and getting made into the um, into the new, into the fuel cells to be shipped down here. So, but unfortunately, there's there's no power up here. There's no way to fix it with bots. I'm going to have to go over there and and hit it with a hammer. Um, fortunately, I wanted to send some stuff over anyway in order to expand this. And I think I need to probably make another another copy of all of this over here. Um, with because with all of these um, productivity modules in it's going to run a bit slower and I'm not going to get as much output but we'll see how that goes um, the other rather frustrating thing is when it after it lost power the as the meteorite defenses got hit by meteorites because there was a shortage of power <laughs> so that's um, uh, sort of irony I guess it's, 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 it's annoying anyway the question is do I have any um, more meteorite defenses here if not I should definitely take some with me I should probably take some with me anyway, just in case. In case, I, yeah, because I don't see any there. Okay, so let's let's put some, let's request some of those as well. So this is easy enough. I go in here, I select the meteorite defense gun, which is that one, and I say I'd like minus four, and then we'll have another four of those delivered, hopefully fairly quickly. Yeah, so I'm still 185 of these uh, productivity modules short. Is there anything else I've been doing? Yes, there is something else I've been doing actually. So, but since the last episode, 
I've started a bit of an expansion down here on the in the um, the rocket silos. So down here, the idea is that each of these is going to be sending off a rocket with one particular resource in it off to the, uh, the space station once I start building my new space station. Uh, and so what we've got here is we've got stations where each one has a specific thing being dropped off. So we've got all the rocket parts being dropped here. They go down to this, this machine here which will then unpack them into individual rocket sections and feed them off to all of the rockets. Then we've got coal, iron, copper and steel. And I'm going to have to add in glass and... Ooh, I don't know. Anything else that comes from Nor originally comes from Norvis. So all of these things that are on these, yeah. So I'm probably going to need one for red circuits, one for green circuits, one for blue circuits. Um, all of the stuff that comes from other planets, though, like cryonite and beryllium, I'm going to ship by, um, by directly from those planets. So, so rather than shipping it via Norvis, which I'm doing at the moment with the have been with the delivery cannons and this this rocket here, I'm going to start doing that a bit more um, efficiently. Why isn't this rocket launched? Let's, let's investigate that as well while we're here. So it's full. It hasn't got a capsule, a space capsule. Why has it not got a space capsule? There's one. There's, an, there's a thing there that's supposed to be put in the minute. So let's do this manually then, I suppose. Um, there we go. So now that rocket will fly off. Um, it should do that. It should do that automatically. I don't know why it didn't. So. Oh, enable when that's equal to zero. Okay, maybe that's what I might listen. Okay, I think I've been fiddling. I think I've been using that for something else, which is why it failed. So now we can get let the rocket go back to just automatically filling itself up, and then it, and then launching once it gets full, um, and going back up to my normal space, my existing space station. So how are we doing here? Still 121 to go. I'm going to um, pause the episode for a moment and get back to you when that's full. So while I was waiting. I noticed that the um, the plastic had production had slowed down a bit again, where is it down here? So that's now there's not as much on those belts as there was before. And looking over here, it seems that all of my petroleum gas tanks are running more or less on empty. So I think that means it's probably not so much a problem with just pushing it down the pipes as much as it is a problem with producing the petroleum gas fast enough. So I've had a bit of a look around here. I noticed some of these machines up here have stopped working. Um, and looking at that, it's because they're full of heavy heavy oil and it's not coming out, it's not being dealt with quickly enough. Um, and so looking over here, these tanks are both at 24,000, which is virtually full. It's certainly more full than they should be. And so what I'm doing up here is building some more of the cracking facilities. So turning the heavy oil into light oil and then turning the light oil into petroleum gas. And so hopefully, once all of this gets built up, we'll discover that for some reason these poles are too far apart and I'll have to put an extra one in. Um, and here as well. And then the idea is, so the bots are coming over, building all of this up for me, because I just did a big copy and paste. And then we should get a bit more, a bit more throughput out of it, should we say? And so everything should run a little bit more effectively. Uh, just wait for all of that to, to fill up, and then of course we've got to wait for the, um, the pylon. Oh, it's because it's I put that a square too high up. That should be a square lower. There's a gap in there, and that's why the uh, the power has made it across. Did I make the same mistake up here? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, mystery solved. It's because I put the thing, that I put it down in the wrong place. So if I was to put another set in, like this, yeah, if I put it in there, then everything will line up happily, and we'll let the bots come and do do that one as well. Because <laughs> I I don't know, I, I I know you need more of either heavy cracking or light cracking. I can't remember which way around it is, so I'm just going to shove loads and loads of both in. Um, I sus no, I'm, I'm not sure which way around it is. And, and given those are both those are both full, it makes it slightly hard. It, it means there's no easy way to work it out either. So um, let's see how that rocket's doing. Um, there we go. Oh, good, we're full. Right. So let's hop in the rocket, head off to. Um, can okay, you need a needs capsule? Do I have a capsule? No, because I put it in my last one in the other rocket. Uh, oh, have I run out of them? Surely not. I mean, I'm... No, I haven't run out of them. Good. Check what's in there. You need to also request from buffer chests. There we go. Right, so here's my rocket. It's... It's not as full as I ideally like my rockets to be. In fact, it's very, very not full. 
I could take out a load more rocket sections with me, but at this point, I don't know. Is it worth it? I'm not really sure. Because it's... Uh, nah, I can't bother. <laughs> I'm just going to be lazy and go, go as it is. So Ganymede landing pad on Ganymede. No, da, 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 da. Let's just go. I'm going to switch this one off Ganymede, though. Because I don't want it to fill up with quite so much fuel. Oh, and as, a, as always, I've forgotten to unplug it from the... That thing. So it's just trying to get all of the same things again. So one of these days, I remember not to do that. Or manage to not do that. Okay, so that's all the stuff I need. Let's, let's first off... Head down here and try and... Oh, I should have brought some fuel cells with me. Because this is going to be tricky to bootstrap. Because I need... Actually, I could probably make them by hand. Alright, we'll do that. And I need to make some um, fuel cells. That'll do. And these are probably already... Yes, these are already up at 500 degrees. So they... Um, Due to Factorio's slightly dodgy, um, I don't know, way of working, you don't actually lose te lose the temperature from things when they're um, there we go. Uh, when they're when they when they're uh, disconnected and when nothing's running off them. So because these things don't work if they're below 500 degrees, this these things don't um, don't lose any temperature below 500 degrees. So there's sort of perfect thermal insulation going on here, which is a bit dodged, but never mind. Ah, this is why that's failed because oh right yes I was talking about this with someone actually um, and we reckon this is going yeah I was going to have problems because of that so let's see I'm gonna have to do a bit of a redesign here um, let's put in a splitter here and output priority to the left oh, output priority doesn't matter um, those go to the left and then I could put them on the near side, but then they just pile up here and never get used. What I actually want to do... Oh, this is getting cramped. I'm going to have to pass this underneath here. And then I guess bring it down here. And merge priority to the left. Right, left, right. My, my left, it's right. Like that. Now... I think that should provide a sort of an overflow for the um, for the dark green ones, because the problem was the dark green one got got to that point and bumped up against there and wouldn't get couldn't get through because there was nothing to use it, so the whole thing gummed up. Now, hopefully, this will just flow round and round. Eventually, this will fill up. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to need to sort of just let this run for a little while and see what happens. However, because I know what's going to happen next, I'm going to fill this up with lots and lots of those and build up a huge number of these fuel cells so that at least it'll keep running for a while while I'm worrying about other things. So, let's have a look at everything else now. So now that the facility is kicked back in and started working again, which is a good start, um, we've still got all the damage we took from that uh, meteorite strike, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a nice flow of... Um, Vulcanite down here and a flow of fuel coming through as well. Now the thing I've come down here to do is to um, get it so that everything is going to run a lot more efficiently and which should also mean it'll produce less stone because that is going to be a bit of a frustration for me dealing with all the stone that it produces. So let's um, unload this for starters and this should mean, in fact I'm going to put my um, repair pack, I've only got 11 of them, that's not very good. Oh well, the repair packs can go in here and we'll hopefully fix stuff up. And as you can see now, bots are bringing out all of the um, productivity modules I brought with me and, take, and loading them all into all of these machines. So now everything here should be brought up to uh, the sort of level of productivity I expect from these things. I can't remember if I talked about this before, but I've got the um, also got core mining going on up here. In fact, let's flit over there and put in another radar because I like to be able to see things. 
So up here, we've got core mining running, and I've only got one connected. In fact, let's take that one out because uh, it's just not necessary. So I've got one one of the core miners, and it's splitting up the um, the core the core chunks from here. We get the, the ready tinted ones that come with a, with a load of extra vulcanite in them. So they get split out into, as you can see here, into vulcanite, a little bit of stone, and some normal core samples. Uh, core fragments. The core fragments get passed along to here where they get ripped apart into the various ores The uh, and then all of it gets passed down this belt here all the way along here where we're then sorting it. And the reason I've got this here is because I need copper for the um, for the, what do we call it, defence uh, meteor meteorite defence guns um, and I thought I might as well just pull everything else out of it at the same time. But this is now backed up completely because we've got we have enough ammunition for it. So it's not really something that's going to keep 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 running and providing vulcanite, which is a bit of a shame because it's a nice easy way of, provi of providing it. it. It will literally never run out. But I mean, there's there's a couple of options here essentially. I can either ship all of this off planet and deal with it somewhere and, and then sort it out somewhere else but that's going to require enormous amounts of rocketry or I can just let it back up and not worry about it and I've gone for the uh, for the easier one of those two so I think I need gonna need to make some more repair packs here what do we need for those iron copper and stone that's convenient so I pick up some copper from here iron from here um, there's stone everywhere on this planet <laughs> I won't grab it from there because that's less helpful. I'll catch some bit that's kind of being brought out here instead before it gets turned into um, landfill. So, while I've been talking about that, hopefully all of this, yes, over here we've got the bots building up all of this um, new section that, I'm, that, I'm, uh, that I've decided I want. And the other thing I wanted to do was upgrade all of my construction assembly machines from tier 2 to tier 3 and that will allow me to put even more um, even more productivity modules in them. So let's get rid of that. Set this to do uh, from assembly machine 2 to assembly machine 3. Brought lots of them with me. So now if I just drag this across, basically it's just these, these, these ones I care about, the ones that are making the actual vulcanite. I don't know if there are any... Oh, there's a few up here. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry about them for now, just in case I run out. So now we'll upgrade all of these. And then once they're upgraded, as I say, we'll go from being able to have two productivity modules in each one over to having... Are there any being placed down? No, it's too busy doing the belts at the moment. Maybe the productivity assembly machines haven't been unloaded yet. Oh, no, here come some of them now. So we go from only from being able to have, oh, I'm in the wrong camera mode, uh, from being able to have two productivity modules in to have four productivity modules in. So that's obviously a big improvement. And I think if I go to here, I can then say for assembly machine threes, I want to just fill them up with productivity module three. And then if I drag my um, module inserter blueprint across them, there we go. It'll tell it that I want to upgrade them all in the appropriate way. And the bots will do all that for me, which is really handy. All of this I've upgraded already. Um, yeah, these are all... No, these aren't fully moduled. Okay, we'll do that and they will be. So, I was saying that perhaps two lots... Thing is, because the rockets are now both full, I don't really know whether two of two sets of this is, is sufficient to keep everything running. So, do I put more in? I think I'll probably leave it as it is because I've got all the stuff up here now to act to to increase to increase that further if I decide I want to. Um, and let's put those repair packs I just made in here. And get repairing everything else. And so this should bring everything here up to running a bit more quickly, a bit more effectively. Now these these are all running in high efficiency mode because I filled them up with productivity modules but that means the the rate they're producing the fuel at is a bit lower than it would otherwise be that said on the flip side it's producing it as fast as these three machines are using it up except yeah so these these three are running flat out and trying to fuel up all of the all the rockets I've got in my uh, new fleet over here that one as you can see is only at 10% less than 10% full this one's nearly full actually maybe I'll fly that one home and this one's about half full, so it's yeah, it, it's going gradually. That's the best best way to put it, I think. Gradually, yes. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here, making sure that everything is 
up to speed or up to <laughs> not not so much up to speed but it's up to productivity <laughs> that's more, more what i mean um the bots are still flitting around a little bit but it looks like most of this is now done has it has it replaced the yes it's replaced all the guns up here um why are you not oh, you're waiting for steel to come in okay that's fair enough and this looks like this looks like it's all running all, all up and running happily now now what about the um Coverex system down here. That was the other the other concern. Let's go and have a proper look at that. So the question so it's working absolutely fine at the moment. Except that it's not actually outputting any extra of the uh, the 235. And all of the two the 238 is all getting eaten up by the Coverex machines. But that's sort of fair enough, I suppose. We can we can cope with that. Um, because that's sort of what's supposed to happen, but we just need this to catch up and then allow it past. Um, 80, 82, interesting. I, I expect these to top out at 80. Yeah. So, but the point is, these have all these have all now got in enough um, uranium 235 that they will just keep churning round and round and round. They're, they're not going to pull any any more, which is why you've got all this spare on the belt here. Um, the question is, what happens when one of them finishes? And hopefully, it'll there'll be enough sort of uh, there'll be enough space on the, the belt will keep flowing. We'll be able to chuck out the spare, the, uh, spare 238 at the top here, um, and hopefully, eventually, this this belt will actually fill up, and then the spare and then extra 235 will come out of the bottom here to be turned into fuel. Um, that's a bit of a matter of time, though. And after it failed last time, I think I kind of want to hang around here for a little while and um, keep an eye on it and make sure it actually is working properly before I jet off back to uh, back to Norfis. So I'm going to leave this running um, and get back to you in a moment. Okay, there we go. I've made a couple of changes, as you can probably see. The first one is this um, escape route around the top here for the any um, for any of the dark uranium, the 238, to go around to make sure it gets prioritised and put in. This this little area acts as a buffer. Then I've put in, a, I've sort of doubled up the belts here, and the point of this one is it means that there's always a guaranteed output for this for this belt, for the stuff coming out of the machines. As you can see, it pushes around here like this, and then when that overloads, like it's doing, it's doing now. Okay, I hasn't visibly done it this time. Um, when all of the machines here unload onto the onto the um, belt here. Any excess uranium 235 will be dropped out into the bottom here and be picked up, either picked up by this machine or just dropped out the bottom. Um, and so you can, as you can see, as it comes round, because the priority is set to this side, this one fills up while these machines are unloading. And if the filled up bit gets all the way back to here, then it'll spit a little bit out, like, like that. There we go. So that's how this, that's how this works. And eventually this bit will fill up completely and at that point the system will back up but that's okay that's expected that's when it's just literally full of 235 so there's, there's more than enough in there and so we're, we're happy i'm happy for that to happen um but it should mean that i will then ha and then the 238 will start to going going past without a problem and we should find that it all just just works although for some reason this, is, this has got stuck why is this stuck it's prioritizing the input on that side but the 238 should still be allowed through, I would have thought. Hmm. That's interesting, unexpected, and unfortunate. <laughs> oh. So there's... Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I was expecting it to allow both of them to flow because... Uh, because the priority on this this side would mean that yes, the uh, two three two three five would go through for preference, but I thought the two three eight would still go through on the other side simply because it's allowed to. Okay, I'm going to have to tweak that a little bit further by the looks of it. Um, how am I going to do this? Let's have a look. That I think works. The question is, what's going to happen here when the two three eight backs all the way up? Um, that I'm not quite sure about. Uh, <laughs> I guess we're going to find out when it happens. Um, but at the moment, the 235 is behaving pretty much as I'd expect it to. But the 238 coming down the other side, it's it's, it's hard to, it's hard to say. This this thing this problem here has surprised me. I wasn't expecting that to clog up. Um, and what's a bit frustrating is what used to be a very very elegant simple solution down here. Granted, a very very elegant and simple solution that didn't work is getting gradually more and more complicated as I shove more and more bits into it. So, 
yeah, it's it's becoming less and less satisfactory. But as you can now see, the 235 has jammed up, as I, as I said it would, um, and that's that's acceptable it's, and expected, so I'm, I don't have a problem with that. But we're still, as I say, waiting to see what happens to the 238 as it comes through. Elsewhere, um, yeah, I'm, oh, this isn't running as expected. In fact, this isn't running at all. Why is this not running at all? Oh, I know why. I've not linked up the water. Yeah, so the um, the processing for the vulcanite up here also requires water in order to work, um, and that's brought in by these pipes. The steam is dealt with locally on site um, with these turbines, but the water does need to be brought in. So now I'll get the bots to put in the um, extra pipe work. Yes, here they come. And then once that piece is put in, there we go. Now it fills up. Now it fills up with water. The steam turbines start running, and the vulcanite starts to flow. And then these machines will start then turning it into the actual vulcanite blocks that we can ship back with us to Norvis. Okay, so it's kind of working. <laughs> I'm still a little bit concerned about this. I mean, I think it should work, but I said that last time and possibly the time before as well. So... Mm, I'm a little, little um, uncertain and unsure about it. I did get bored earlier though and filled all these up with speed modules just to make it go a bit quicker so I could find so I could try and find out whether it was going to work a bit sooner because uh, the Coverex process and the uranium and um, ore dealing with the process are both a bit slow. I can put in another. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if I could actually. Let's try putting in another. Uh, what do you call it up here? Uh, centrifuge. That's the word. Let's see if there's another one in the. Uh, yes, here it, here it comes. Oh. Alright, put that there then. Put that there. Is that good? Yes, that's good. I feel like all the 238 is getting gobbled up by the um, fuel cell production down here, so we're never actually going to get to the point where we've got enough of it until all of this is filled up. Um, so, which it nearly has, to be quite honest. I think I'm going to call that good and. At least, if I need to do any more tweaking, I've got power now, so I'll be able to do it remotely, as long as I've noticed reasonably soon. So, I've still only got not enough fuel there. This one is now full, so I want this to go to... Let's go back to Norvis with this, and take it to the Vulcanite Inn on Norvis, and climb aboard. And now, when I launch this rocket, I'm going to switch over to um, uh, satellite mode, so we can watch... So we can watch this all refill as it, as it happens. So, okay, I'm going to launch it manually. As you can now see, this is filling up again automatically from the um, from the belts around here. We've got this this one um, filling it up with the rocket sections that are being produced down here from the stacked ones. And we've got the, um, the rocket ca capsule has been put in automatically from here. And if we look back at Norvis, here comes my landing now. One of them's crashed again, which is rather annoying. Um, I think I need to improve the, what is it, the uh, rocket survivability. Yes, that's not too expensive yet, so let's get a couple of levels of that. Alright, three levels of that. And a cryo gun as well, why not? Oh no, it's the cargo safety, sorry. That's that's the one that I need. Um, and then let's take a couple of levels of the survivability anyway. I've stopped doing the rocket reusability ones now, because these have got so expensive, it's just doesn't seem doesn't really seem worth it so uh, we'll, we'll but yeah the the um, cargo safety and survivability definitely seem worthwhile when I'm going to be doing quite a lot more of this sort of stuff with rockets now one of the problems I've got here is only three quarters of the vulcanite actually makes it out of the um, the rocket thing because a quarter of it is being fed down here into these that are making the, uh, the fuel I might start bringing um, light oil over here to turn into fuel at once the plastic production gets a bit more under control um, because it is using a lot of my vulcanite and now I am starting to use the vulcanite for useful stuff like down here and this I, uh, I triggered after I got back last time I brought some brought the vulcanite over um, unfortunately it got through it all rather quickly so as you can see the, the copper is is fully backed up because it does produce a lot of the, um, the stuff uh, so this is all run quite happily uh, happily through but then the um, the iron production has eaten up all of its vulcanite, and as you can see, there's iron ore in all of, on all of these belts, so it is working. 
but because we've run out of Vulcanite, it's not actually actually working. <laughs> Uh, down here we've got the same with the stones. So the stones has been brought in and the stone bricks have been brought out and again it's run out of um, run out of vulcanite so it's not running and then down here we've got exactly the same with the steel. Now the steel I've just shoved in all of the all of the productivity modules everywhere just because I'm never going to get a, a full belt of it out without putting like five full belts in because cause steel has that um, five to one ratio in it for, for, for the, uh, the amount it uses up. But hopefully now that I've got all that vulcanite being brought down from brought across from the rocket will fill up over here and unfortunately I only get about a train and a half's worth out of it but uh, this will get to yeah there we go we've got 20k in there now so hopefully a train should come over quite oh no no sorry it's a minimum of 20k we've got 6k in there now so it's filling up we'll give that a moment but yes this is is all running as expected. I, I I put enough vulcanite in there to, to sort of as a proof of concept to make sure it was working. So as you can see I managed to get some steel out on this side. There's um, 10,000 steels come out, 11,000 stone bricks. That's not as many as I was expecting given the, the amount of steel I got. Uh, 14,000 iron and of course loads of copper but that's and 76,000 copper but that's because I set the copper going earlier. Why is there stone in that one? go and take that piece of stone out. I don't think it's going to end up getting put into a, um, a tr oh it would actually because these are uh, these aren't filter inserters for some reason. It's the only station that isn't filter inserters. Oh, goodness knows why so let's take that out. Um, yeah that presumably ended up in there through I don't really know. Um, I guess when I uh, built the whole thing up and there must have been a bit of stone on one of the belts in there somewhere and it just got passed through and uh, came back out again which is a little bit unfortunate. I also just noticed that there's uh, there were some pieces of belt missing on the pickup station so I'm just going to go and fix that as well while I'm at it. Now if we have another look up here how's the station getting on? 11,000 half full. <laughs> yeah so it's complaining about the lack of vulcanite at the moment but um, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I don't know how fast I'm going to have to have rockets coming in to uh, to keep up with that. It's going to be a bit horrific. But if I look back over here now again, we've got mm, some. This is I have to admit this is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping for Vulcanite to be coming through it to at least filling up those two blue belts. So I think what I might do at this point is is um, actually top that up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of that, copy it and paste another copy of it in over here. Yes, that is the right point. Put it there. <laughs> and now the bots will come out. We'll have a, a bot frenzy of building and hopefully that'll all get built up. And put some big stuff up like this. And the one I keep forgetting is the water, of course. So let's do that manually. There we go. And hopefully, oh no, I need to link all of these up as well. Put this in there, because that's that's the stone. Yes, that's the stone output. So we need to chuck that somewhere, and it can be chucked in with all the rest of this stone that's coming out of here. Um. Oh, this is. Oh, this is even more even more stone. All right, let's do that then. <laughs> This isn't the most efficient way of wiring. So actually, let's since I'm doing this bit from fresh, let's make it a bit more efficient. Um, and what I'll do is let's see, underground section there. Yeah, I can't just feed it onto this belt because this one is supposed to be full of vulcanite and stone, and it'll interrupt the flow of vulcanite and, and slow things down. So I don't want to do that. Then down here we've got the output belts. This is a complete mess of. It's not coming out fast enough to need all of this. Uh, let's just... Oh, that's fine, actually. It's over the top, but it'll do. I can't even tell what's going on in there. Um, oh, that was a... Okay, that was a, um, a, belt, a, a belt side balancer. Let's leave that in there. And if we bring that over here... And join it on over here. I hope I've got enough belts and stuff for this. <laughs> I didn't check that very carefully, but I think I probably have. 
so yeah as you can see now this is the this is the extra expansion i was sort of considering and why i put so much extra of everything in there before i blasted off and this so this should now have enough stuff to build up all of this and get me up to a nice well it'll be double that which is going to be quite close to two full blue belts i think um that's the point if that's producing one and this is producing a second yeah i'm going to need another belt coming along here Oh, this is a mess. <laughs> Let's remove this. Then we can have this one come around here. Stop going underground. There we go. And using this belt. Okay, so the, my reasoning there was if these two basically what which I had running before are essentially producing enough oh goodness sake if these two that were running before are essentially producing one full blue belt then these two are going to produce the second blue belt so I want that to be separate and run in there rather than trying to merge the two um, I think this should probably be, be better now <laughs> Yeah, so this even even when it was playing a little bit of catch up there, it was still. Oh, this, come on, bring this belt over. <laughs> I think that should be okay. I mean, I know that's sort of famous last words, and I say it all the time, but it should pro hopefully will be. Um, oh, okay, the train has happened. Let's see if this is still running. Yeah, so here, as you can see, here we've got the vulcanite pouring out of here now. It comes out at a hell of a rate. If we watch this pylon, you can see the speed. It's well, yes, you can't. It's coming out. It's not coming out quite as fast as I was implying. But so the, the red one is the copper has got back, back, uh, backed up. But along here, it's pouring through. It's being used for all the steel. Uh, sorry, the iron here. It's being used for the stone bricks down here and for the steel down here. So it's getting these belts are flowing quite quickly and then just distributing it across all of the um, places it's needed. But it gets through it rather quickly, as I say. So um, yeah. Oh, it's been destroyed. No. This is oh, this is a different place. I was going to say this is a little bit annoying because there's this one place where the turrets keep getting taken out, but it's not <laughs> it's not where I thought it was. Um, so I've come in a bit too close to the shore here, so I'm trying to defend on an end, which means that these turrets will get attacked by things as they come along here, and they won't get full sort of coverage and support from all of the other turrets until they get to until the biters get to about here. So the so it's a bit of an awkward way of doing it. Over here, no, here. I fixed it now because they, I had the same sort of problem here when the, when the turrets only came out to about here. But I put in an extra robo port and put in turrets going out a bit further now. So actually, these ones will never never ever get a, get an opportunity to shoot the biters. But it does mean I've got the biters are going to get attacked all the way from about here down to when they get in range of actually being able to shoot back about here. So hopefully we won't get that sort of them being picked off on the north corner like they are over here. Um, I'm not really sure what I can do about this, apart from, I don't know, I could start to do a, a, a shallow angle downwards like that. I could come up here with an artillery train and wipe all of these out, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, I haven't done that yet. That was a bit of a distraction, so is this, oh, is this some more iron ore being brought in. So I am ripping through the, um, the metal ores quite quickly, but I'm also producing the metal at a, at a huge rate. Now this is irritating. That shouldn't be there. <laughs> so you see, there's, there's always bits of debugging you need to do whenever you um, build stuff. It's a bit like, yeah, a bit like programming, I guess, in that you get, you do something and if it works first time, you, it's, it's shocking and amazing and you don't, you can't believe your eyes. <laughs> but, why is this stopped? Oh, okay, because these, these are running slowly because they've got the um, productivity modules in. These are also running slowly, but they're producing more. Oh, and they've got the speed modules down here. I probably need more, another row of speed modules, uh, beacons of speed modules across the middle of to, to get these as well. But to be honest, I think I'm just not going to worry about it for now. We'll see how it goes and whether it becomes a problem. Whether I'm not, if I'm not, if I discover I'm not producing steel fast enough, then I'll come down here and put some more, and put a bit more, a few more modules in to get everything running a bit faster. But for the moment, I'm not going to worry about it. So that's been my um, progress for the last episode and a bit, a bit of sort of 
scratching my head and umming and erring over things. So let's see, on the to-do list, I'd say I have now increased the plastic and sulfur production. If we look at the, um, what do we call it, the, the um, console, we can see that all the complaints recently have basically been about vulcanite or the, the water, which doesn't count. So I think plastic is now actually okay. Let's have a look at the plastic sta pickup station, see how much is in there. Yes, this is actually backed up now, this is, this is done. I reckon, there aren't any details in there, are there? No. That's now done. I can tick that off. So, plastic, increased plastic production. Well, sulfur production I haven't increased, but then on the flip side, it hasn't actually been a problem. So, as we can see here, as we can't see here, because I put the window over the top of it, as we can see here, there's 85,000 in there, so I'm not worried about sulfur production. It's, it, it's fast enough now. Smelting with vulcanite. I think that's I think that's done. So see, I've built it. Train infrastructure is done. The only the only thing that isn't done at this point really is the um, this bringing in vulcanite fast enough. But I'm going to say the smelting part is done. So next is shipping resources around by rocket. Well, vulcanite to Norvis is is kind of done. I mean, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to tick that off because it is it is being brought over. It's not it's perhaps not quite sufficiently um it's not quite fast enough and reliable enough yet um but it's mostly done if we have a look over here again how's this getting on typically i did i've run out of oh for goodness sake i've run out of robo ports i shipped all of all of the stuff over for building all of this i think um i might have forgotten some of it but i think i shipped i tried to ship it all over but i forgot to put more robo ports in um um are there any here that I don't need? I can pull a few of these back out again now that we're um, done. I don't think I need that one. I'm removing protection from this area to an extent now, which is a bit of a, a shame. So they won't come out and repair things if they do get if they do, do get take a hit from a, um, a what do you call it uh, a meteorite. But on the flip side, there shouldn't be any meteorites getting through because I put in six of the um, launchy things. So maybe <laughs> I guess we'll see. Three, yeah, right. There's a, and there's a fourth one. Let's take that out. So that should allow those to be built, and everything else to now be built, unless there's more stuff that I've forgotten. Oh, yes, and you can see here there's some of the resources coming filtering through here because I because I've been obviously been using using some copper, uh, so that's pulled some of that through, and so it's released the uh, the pressure on this, and some of the uh, the vulcanite is flooding through, and that's getting priority put into here, not by priority, but it's getting put in and added to the uh, the stream that goes through. And everything else gets filtered out, including the uranium, which get, comes down here and gets added into the um, the uranium processing down here. How's that getting on? Oh, we're doing quite well with the fuel cells there, so that's going well. Now we can put in the... Um, if the bots had enough battery power, we could put in some of these um, robot ports. There we go. And now there's this flood of... Oh, flood of me pressing the wrong button. A uh, flood of the robots coming out to pick up all of the rocks and things that are on the ground over here. And then there should be another flood of them. Yeah, here we go. With all the bits and pieces needed to build up the, uh, the extra refining cap capacity. Okay, you can see things starting up over here. Power is apparently a thing that's needed. Uh, I can't put that there. Oh, <laughs> um, okay, so that's slightly awkward. These pylons are slightly too awkwardly spread. Oh, there we go. I can put one there. And the same over here. No, I think I'm going to need two for this one. Okay. As long as I've got enough pylons, which is, as I say, was one of the things I forgot to count. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um... Yes, there's um, 99 pylons in this network. Okay, so there's going to be plenty for that. Uh, let's let this run on uh, fast forward a little bit, and, Dave, and so you can, we can see it all getting built up, and then see if I've made any more mistakes. And then I think I should call it the end of the episode because that's been quite a while now. I've been recording for a, yeah, well, quite about, about an hour. Although um, some of that you'll you'll be you'll be here, but please know I fast forwarded some of that for you. Right, I think that's probably enough idly watching the build process. I'll leave the bots to get on with it, and um, we, can, we can come back here in the next episode and see how, how they've got on. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you then.